Live from Aquinas Hall in Spark Hill, New York, this is the East Coast Conference Men's Basketball Tournament Championship Final. Today, the number two seeded Damon Wildcats take on the top seed defending champion, St. Thomas Aquinas College Spartans. And a good afternoon, one and all. It's chilly outside in the northern suburbs of New York City, but we're toasty warm here at Aquinas Hall. Steve Boss and Scott Green, glad you could join us for all the action. And Scott, uh, a season like no other after a year like no other ends with something almost predictable. The top two teams squaring off. Uh, you know, Steve, we just sat here next to each other exactly 365 days ago. We were in Washington, D.C., right at the beginning of this, and I remember them saying there have been six cases confirmed in Washington, D.C., and who could have thought that this is what was going to come down over the last year. But this has been a great tribute to both these programs. Coaches, not only coaching your team, but you're coaching COVID. And they were able to keep these kids healthy. A couple hiccups along the way. These two teams met a week ago in tremendous games. They split the regular season. But if you take six points, that's what separates these two teams. Last Saturday... Damon was able to come in and defeat St. Thomas Aquinas in overtime. The next day, St. Thomas Aquinas was able to beat them by three points. This is going to be a great matchup today where you put COVID aside, you focus on getting that ECC championship. Damon coming in off a home victory on Main Street, as it were, in Amherst and Lumsden Gymnasium over Roberts Wesleyan College, nearby rival from Rochester. And St. Thomas Aquinas in this building rolled to a 110-75 victory over Malloy. Let's take a look at what we're going to see on the floor today. First, let's take a look at the number two seeded Damon Wildcats. Well, Damon, I'll tell you, you look at a squad that comes in. They had a big victory over Roberts Wesleyan a week ago. And, you know, what can you say about Andrew Sisko? I mean, he's one of the top players in the country. He's the All-American. 27 points per contest to throw in his number one ranking, 13.4 rebounds per game. He has been tremendous in that semifinal game, just an average 24 and 15. And, and the mantra is, when it comes to Mike McDonald and the Wildcats, Andrew Sisko is going to get his. Sisko only had six points at halftime in Friday night's win over Roberts Wesleyan and really looked uncomfortable. Two of six from the line and really out of sync. But he gets his. Every game, game in, game out. He's that regular. He's that dependable. But you can't beat a good team with just one player. And that's how that's how the Wildcats came out of here with a victory last Saturday. Well, you look at that game against Malloy. You talk about firing on all cylinders. Most cars are, have that seven-cylinder. They have seven people that scored in double figures in that game against Malloy. That is high-octane offense. And the one guy you have to really look out for today has been Grant Singleton. Grant Singleton comes in. He's 17 points in that semifinal against Beloy. The six-foot guard from Sumter, South Carolina. This kid could play, and he's primed for another big game. On the Saturday game, that was one week ago yesterday, it was Ryan Salzburg who came up with some big shots at the uh, first one, a desperation shot at the end of the first half, which he equaled on Friday night against Roberts. Wesley, and amazing with, with time running down. Hit two big ones in overtime and blocked the potential sh tying shot from Lou Griffith. On Saturday, it was Grant Singleton who took charge as St. Thomas Aquinas came back from a late deficit to take the victory. There's a lot of postseason history in this game, but I think the byline of the story is one team desperately trying to get to the top of the mountain and the other trying to stay there. Well, without a doubt, I mean, you look at St. Thomas Aquinas, what, these guys only know what championship basketball is all about, especially the guys on the floor. They've won four of their last five ECC championships. Today, they go for number five. They didn't have the opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament. This is something that they want to get back to. Both of these teams, in fact, had qualified for last year's tournament. Spartans are led by the ECC Coach of the Year for the third time, Tobin Anderson. And if you want an amazing number, and again, the stack team had only won a combined 10 games in the two previous years to Tobin Anderson becoming the head coach. This is the seventh championship final appearance in eight seasons for St. Thomas Aquinas under Tobin Anderson, including that first year. Just an amazing run. Yeah, I mean, you look at a guy, especially at the Division II level, he is a guy who is so dedicated to this level of basketball. You know, you, you don't think down the road, not too much further, this guy, this is going to be a name that you may see coming through the ranks in Division I college basketball. But for right now, he is dedicated to the stack program, and he has shown what it takes to win at this level. 
ECC Championship at stake. Both of these teams have virtually assured themselves spots in the NCAA tournament. That, those pairings will be announced later on this evening. But as the Spartans take the floor and the Wildcats stand in front of their bench, we're going to step aside and throw it over to St. Thomas Aquinas College PA announcer Brad Sarno for today's national anthem and starting lineups. Good afternoon. And thank you, Brad Sarno. As the teams go to their respective huddles, Damon College looking for its first ECC tournament championship. Last time they made it to the finals was in the 2016 season. But it's really through no fault of their own. The biggest obstacle 
to the Wildcats' success because it has been a tremendous program under Mike McDonald. Stands just across the floor to them wearing the home gold. St. Thomas Aquinas has eliminated Damon in all four postseason meetings, three in the semifinals and one in the ECC championship. This is the second meeting. First championship game ever played at Aquinas Hall. It's a cozy surrounding here, and that's the reason that Aquinas Hall has not been tabbed as a host site. So this is a rare opportunity, another difference in the year of COVID. And all three games between Damon and Stack have been played now in this building as we are underway. Damon's wearing the road black uniforms, white letters and numbers, some blue trim, script Damon above the numbers on front, moving broadcast left to right in half number one. Stack in the home Vegas gold with maroon letters and numbers trimmed in yellow, and they're moving from right to left. Here's Lou Griffith. Shot clock is at 12. Long pass for Lynch. Kicks out for Dimitri Roberts. Roberts guarded by Sean Fassiero. Lynch from 15. Back rims the jumper. Salzburg. Keep an eye on Ryan Salzburg, one of the promising freshmen on this Damon team. They spread the floor now with the high weave. Mason hands for Salzburg. Here's Kyle Harris into the box. Big Andrew Cisco moves on Lynch. Baby Hook is off the mark. Cisco got off to a slow start Friday night, but again, he's going to get his. Each team coming up empty. Singleton way downtown for three. Well short. Singleton hits a lot of those, but that one was off the mark. Griffith fall away elbow. That's off. Well, both teams early feeling a little bit of the jitters here. You know, playing in the East Coast Conference Championship, they know this is this is it to end the season and w wanting to move on. But, you know, we talked about Cisco. I remember Cisco a year ago started out the same way, very quiet in that first quarter, and then was able to find his rhythm. Of course, Damon making the trip, and that's another difference. Normally the semifinals on Saturday and the finals are on Sunday. Here's Mason in the right corner for three is good. Andrew Mason breaks the seal. Wildcats on the board first. And it's so important for Damon to get off to a good start in this game. You don't want to fall behind St. Thomas Aquinas. Roberts kicks out for Singleton. He'll try that shot again. Good. Singleton answers with a three, and we're tied. And we talked about Grant Singleton in the open, and we said we expect him to have such a good game today. He's a rhythm shooter, and when a rhythm shooter gets that first one down, you got to get out and guard him. And it shows you his confidence and ability to put that shot up as he just badly missed one. That one was right on target. Team is tied at three. Expect to see a lot of this throughout the afternoon as Stack and Damon very evenly matched. Here's Kyle Harris straight away three, front rim and off. Well, you're going to see a lot of three-point shots being taken in this game. Both these guys, they're, they're, they're not shy in letting it fly. Here's another buy story to keep an eye on. As St. Thomas Aquinas, you saw, aired out that pass. It was tapped out of bounds in front of Catabayo. St. Thomas Aquinas does go with a deeper bench, and they want to set the tempo high. I think Damon's going to want to stay more in a half court as Singleton pops another three just short. See Damon running the floor now. Fasiero hands off Mason, open for three. Good. He makes it look easy. And, oh, Damon today, they got to make sure they have good shot selection and keep that tempo. You might as well just shut the shot clock off today. We're not going to need the shot clock today. Well, we said Andrew Cisco's going to get his, but he can't beat a team alone as Cannavio misses Lynch with the rebound. He battles in traffic with Mason and Harris. You know, I think the difference in today's game is going to be who gives up more second chances. And that, that team is going to be successful. You know, a lot of, We're going to get a lot of one and dones today because both these teams like to come down and fire up that first three. But giving yourself second chances is going to be key. Matchup to watch as well as Kevin Lynch, who is on the line, makes the first of two. He struggled from the strike this year, 8 of 16 coming in. Number 20 in Vegas gold going against number 22 in black. Lynch draws that assignment when St. Thomas Aquinas plays Damon, and it is a, a thing to watch as the second one is off, and Fossa Hero comes away with the rebound. Yeah, no doubt about it. He's given up two, two to three inches, you know, on Cisco. And but fortunately, Cisco likes to stay to the outside. That allows him to give up those three extra inches. They're on the post up backside. Help comes from Calabio for the steal. Need that weak side help against Cisco when they try to post him up. Griffith passes up the three. Roberts closed quickly by Salzburg. Man defense both ways. Cannavio from the elbow with the jumper. It ties the score at six. Yeah, one of the things that always impresses me the most about Tobin Anderson's ball club is their ability to reverse the basketball, and they do it so quickly. 
Elijah Bovell, and this is a story for St. Thomas Aquinas, transferred from Queens College before this season. Queens opted out on playing, as did a handful of East Coast Conference schools, and Bovell, looking to transfer for his senior season, came here. He averaged just under 18 a game for the Knights, but has had a hard time finding the offensive rhythm here for Stack as Harris attacks the basket, gets the friendly roll, Wildcats back on top. And I, and I remember Elijah Bovell really well. I, I covered him numerous times back on Long Island. He comes from Baldwin High School, one of the top high schools in New York State when it comes to basketball. And, you know, guys like Darius Burton, the head coach over there, is a, is a legend. And if he has struggled with the system, Fasiero got a hand on that Roberts shot. He has been a contributor on defense, and that's what Tobin Anderson wants him to focus on. Let the offense come to him if he can. Here's Fasiero for Harris. Cisco on the overplay. That's Vasilis Tolias is coming to the game for St. Thomas Aquinas. Almost came up with the steal, and Cisco goes to the deck with Dimitri Roberts. And a timeout was called. I did not see the signal, so I'm not sure who took it, but that will go to immediate timeout with 16 minutes and one second to play in the first half. And actually, they're saying not a media, so I think they're going to keep it at a 30. little confusion to our broadcast right. Damon has led throughout 8-6. We're going to step aside for a brief break. Well, we're going to keep going instead. So, yeah, that is that was, in fact, the case. The officiating crew, t by the way, this is the crew that did that Saturday game here. And what a terrific game it was because they let both teams play. And not a lot of fouls called. We saw... In Friday night's Damon game, uh, Fasiero got in foul trouble early on a couple of hand checks and really changed the tenor of that game as he is an important cog in this Damon offense. So they're calling it a 30-second timeout, and they're bringing the teams out of the huddle. And now they're going to extend it to a media timeout. Confusion reigns at Aquinas Hall. That's a good time for us to take a break and regroup. 16-01 to play in the first half. Damon on top by a score of 8-6. You're watching the ECC Men's Basketball Championship game on the ECC Sports Network, powered by Blue Frame Technology. In a world full of opportunity, and it's changing every day. But when you realize the world isn't where you want it to be, it's time to build your legacy. Higher education has the power to change your life and to change the world around you. If you're looking to contribute to a better world, you can start by pursuing a college education. Consider Damon College to be the change and make an impact. There's still time to apply. Change your life and your world. Check out damon.edu to get started. Steve Balson, Scott Green back with you at Aquinas Hall in Sparkville, New York, Rockland County. About 10 minutes north of New York City. Glad you could join us for the ECC Championship Finals. Scott, both teams trying to set their own tempo early on. How do you evaluate what we've seen in the first four minutes? Well, you know, nobody's being shy. They're coming down and they're letting it fly. And I, I like that style. That's the way they like to play. They're not deviating from what got them here today. And, you know, this season, they're not used to playing. You know, typically they play a 28-game season. Today, you know, they come in playing 11, 12 games. And, you know, I think they're still getting those legs underneath them. And I think that's been the story of the season. But, you know, as of right now, I mean, the St. Thomas Aquinas is doing a really nice job on Andrew Cisco, not making him comfortable down low. Singleton with speed, jams it off the underside of the basket. Cisco with the intimidation factor on the backside. Harris with Elijah Bavell guarding him. Backdoor feed, nice redirection there. Grant Singleton changed his body angle in midair but wasn't able to hold it, so it'll be a sideline inbound for the Wildcats with 20 on the shot clock. Now Grant Singleton does a nice job defensively denying his man the ball, and then he's so good at coming over on the weak side help, and he's been doing a good job on Cisco thus far. Boy, tremendous quickness has made him a threat all the way around in a first-team all-conference selection. Cisco ball takes on Bavell, throws it into the corner, Fasiero, nice two-man game with Cisco, and he's fouled by Kevin Lynch. See, those are the type of plays where I want to see Cisco finish. You know, you got the strength. You got the power. You get yourself shoulders squared on that block. You want to try to finish that play. Tobin Anderson, not at all pleased. Again, our broadcast position here for this season for St. Thomas Aquinas, normally we're at the midcourt area. This time we're off to the right and literally... Uh, inches away from the St. Thomas Aquinas bench and Tobin Anderson not liking the nature of that foul call is it's only the first one each way 
I think there's a bit of a message as he can't afford to have Lynch in foul trouble. Vendola in the corner. Catabayo. Talias flashes to the ball with Mason guarding him. Talias in the box comes up short. Elijah Bavel, good hustle for the rebound. Antonio Vendola for Singleton. Plenty of time, 12 on the shot clock. Talias with the European hop step. Native of Athens, Greece. Fasigiro crosses over. Mason might have gotten away with a walk. We play on. Here's Fasigiro in the corner. Kicks back for Cisco. Mason, ball fakes. Cisco fires a three. That's short. Offensive rebound grab by Kyle Harris. Fasigiro straight away three front rim, back rim, and off. And Antonio Vandola sneaks in front of Cisco for the carry. Harris does a nice job cutting off Vendola. Catavaio kicks for Bavel. Singleton for three. Good. Grant Singleton, second of the game. St. Thomas Aquinas ties the score. Yeah, well, we knew he was going to have a big game today. You could just tell by his momentum of the last couple games that he's been playing. You know, and both these teams well off their scoring average. When these teams met a weekend to go, Look like both might be a little fatigued. I think there's a lot of freshness, just great defenses. Bavel, and that's the respect that Mason has earned by his ability to shoot that three-point shot at a 44% clip. Yeah, this is what uh, this has been one of the keys for St. Thomas Aquinas all year long is their ability to make those household substitutions, keeping the legs fresh, and that's how deep this team goes you know we talked about seven players going into double figures for them in the semifinals i mean this is a team that's number eight in the ncaa in division two in scoring offense here salzburg drives through traffic little floater is good from the baseline and again salzburg has been so prolific from outside that that has opened up the drive to the lane he took advantage there and gets damon back on top by a pair that's jamal barnes in for the first time for st thomas aquinas Mentioned that Talias just came out. Unusual to see him this early, so Tobin Anderson trying a new wrinkle in the rotation. Vandola dribbles through traffic, scoops it off the backboard, didn't spin it quite enough. Fonsiguro in transition, had a three on two, kicks it out for Mason, wide open, left side three, good! Andrew Mason in transition, it's a five point game. Uh, you can't left me leave Mason open, I mean he's a kid who can knock down the shot. 13, 13, 2, and, and 7 rebounds on the season. Griffith catches and fires a 3. So the Spartans perhaps showing a little frustration now as they look to get some offense moving. Harris kicks to the corner. Salzburg open 3. That's off. A little short. That one was home. You can bet Tobin Anderson would have been right there for a timeout. Roberts pulls up and fires. You know, and I like that shot by Roberts. He was able to penetrate, get inside, make the short jumper. You know, the three-point shots haven't been falling for stack. They're trying to get into some kind of rhythm here. You know, and those are the kind of shots you need. And a sign of the familiarity is he knows if he goes in too deep, Cisco is lurking. Roberts listed at 5'8". Harris dribbles it out of bounds on the far side. Again, narrow confines here at Aquinas Hall. Only a few feet between the sideline and that padded wall under the basket to our right and on the far side. Not terribly different from Lumsden Gymnasium except that it's enclosed on three sides and has a little bit more room on each side between the sideline and the wall. So Thiemann is not totally unfamiliar. Singleton from 15 is good. And they were able to execute that zizzer cut to perfection. And you're gonna get out of Grant Singleton wide open. Eight points for Singleton. We played just over eight minutes. Roberts might have gotten a hand on that. Either way, it hit Fasayero. So that's the Spartan Bedlam pressure that they like to employ. First time we've seen them pull it out today. And that forces a turnover. Stack will have the ball when we return. 11.42 to play in the first half. Damon holding a 14-13 lead. You're watching the ECC Men's Basketball Championship game on the ECC Sports Network, powered by Blue Frame Technology. For me, just kind of it was the glue that kept my family together, I feel like. I don't know what it was that drew me in, but after I started playing for a while and started seeing some early success as a little kid, to see how much it meant to my parents to see me play the game and, and try to make a difference was really what fueled me to keep playing and, and stay competitive. 
being a triple major is not necessarily easy, but at the same time, it is what you make it. Being a tighter knit university, I have a lot of classes with the same professors, so they know me pretty well. I think it's that personal relationship that really helped me to thrive as a student. I was able to come here and, and get my triple major, as well as play a super high level of baseball against some of the best players in the country. There's a lot of options here in Division II with a lot of great ball players and a lot of great people, and they make sure that they give you every opportunity to succeed on and off the field. Steve Boston, Scott Green back with you at Aquinas Hall, ECC Men's Basketball Tournament Championship game with Damon leading by one over St. Thomas Aquinas. Stack inbounding on the baseline. Right now, St. Thomas Aquinas has cooled off from the field, but it's their defense that has kept them within reach early on. Yeah, no question about it. You look at 4-0 in the turnover column. You know, and you know, that's what, those are one of the things that you, ha you can ill afford against the St. Thomas Aquinas program. You know, and that lets them right back in the game. Catabayo absorbs the bump and gets the finish. And St. Thomas Aquinas is doing a great job now getting in the paint, making that extra pass and working for a better shot. And now you look at St. Thomas Aquinas, they're picking up full. They're going to try to force some turnovers and get some points off turnovers. And again, some contact there, referee letting them play through. And that's good basketball. The Singleton tried. Boy, what a clever play by Singleton as he was racing with Justin Johnson, who's checked in for Damon. Tried to roll it, almost bowl it up the floor toward Lou Griffith, but wasn't able to get the angle quite right, and like many of my shots, it slid into the gutter. <laughs> Mason on the inbound. We could guard him from where we are behind the glass. Johnson clears the pressure for Cisco. So St. Thomas Aquinas now getting a little bit more in Damon's grill on the defensive side, especially with that three-point shooting accuracy by Andrew Mason. He's got three already. Johnson steps on the baseline. Well defended by Cataballo. So Stack forcing turnover number five. Well, what Stack does is they, they take Damon out of their offense. They don't allow them to run a set. They keep them uncomfortable, and that's what forces turnovers, and that gives them their fifth turnover of the game. We saw the Red Hawks of Roberts Wesleyan on Friday night play a very aggressive, in-your-face type of defense, and it did throw Damon off its game at times. Beautiful move by Lynch, and he misses the layup. Everything right to the left hand, but the finish. Cisco now backs in Lynch. Toe Anderson screaming, no fouls from the bench. Cisco was trapped. Gets the pass to Mason. Salzburg, 15 still to go. Cisco on the weak side feed. That's nice movement by Cisco. He, he he got himself jammed up on the on the block. Was able to get rid of the ball, and then get himself back in position with finishing with a nice left hand. He's got tremendous footwork. That allows him to get out of the paint and make those sharp cuts to the basket. And that's really where he's effective down low. He can post up, shoot the three. There's a reason this young man is the player of the year. Meanwhile, Dimitri Roberts says thank you very much. The first team all-conference selection puts the hosts on top by one. Well, uh, Dimitri Roberts, a uh, kid not too far from here, Mount Vernon, New York. And, you know, 12 points in that semifinal win. And again, only a junior. Cisco was grabbed on the arm by Griffith, who nods an acknowledgement to referee Martin Herrick. You know, those are the those are the kind of plays where you're Andrew Cisco. You're a tremendous player. You're a great athlete, but you're down on the block at six foot nine. You cannot allow a Lewis Griffith at five foot eight to come in and disturb you. And you're going to see St. Thomas Aquinas send Griffith and Roberts both in that same height range for that double down defense. The key for Cisco is if he keeps the ball low, both Griffith and Roberts have such tremendous hand quickness that they'll come up with the steals. Once he gets it above chest level, it'll be hard to do very much with it. And Cisco tries to put Damon on top, but is off to a four from the line. Again, he struggled in the first half on Friday. Singleton with the explosion, kicks out for Griffith. Quick rotation for Roberts. One more pass for Calabayo. Griffith cut off. Good defense by Damon on the rotation. That one is deflected. Cisco had it for a moment. Roberts had it. Fasayero goes to the deck. Rolls over there trying to call a timeout. And referee Dennis Alonco is pointing to the stack bench. I don't know how they could have gotten a timeout because I don't think they ever had possession. 
You know, St. Thomas Aquinas moves the ball so well, and they move it so quick. But on the flip side, when you move the ball as quick as they do, sometimes you don't have a tendency to get a look and make a move on your own You know, when, when you're moving the ball so fast. So, in fact, that timeout is credited to Damon, so they will come out of this with possession, 9.23 to play in the first half. Score tied at 17. Again, this is the only regional championship game going on this season. Uh, the Northeast 10 Conference, or three conferences in the East region for our new viewers joining us. The East Coast Conference is one, the Northeast 10 Conference is another, and the Central Atlantic Collegiate Conference is the third. The Northeast 10 opted out this season. The only teams that tried to play uh, a, a sort of full schedule, the College of St. Rose and American International. St. Thomas Aquinas played both of those squads. The CACC attempted to play a conference-only schedule. Actually, they did. And, uh, well, as the era that we live in, and, and you spoke about it earlier, Scott, about how these young men have had to go through such a difficult year with COVID uh, protocols and, and cancellations and reschedules, the CACC had to cancel its entire tournament because of COVID. Yeah, you know, it, we talk about coaching and, you know, how difficult it can be at times on the floor. It's coaching off the floor that made it more difficult this year. I mean, this is a time where you got to tell the kids, you know, you can't have any kind of college life. You can't go to the parties on Friday nights. And you got to confine yourselves to each other. And because if one person gets it, then you're shutting down your part of your season. And, you know, and I, I think this is just a tribute to both these squads who made the commitment uh, to staying active and to staying on the floor. And that's why they're here today. You know, it's worth pointing out, too, that, that we've seen this at every level of sport. You feel like you're watching a game. Griffith stands in and draws the charge on Cisco. Big fellow doesn't pick up too many fouls, and that's one on him. But it's also worth noting that, you know, we've seen this happen at the pro level. Baseball, uh, basketball, hockey has had it. Uh, teams have had outbreaks, and that's with all the resources at their disposal. You drill down to the Division II level and see what these teams have had to go through, and you mentioned the coaching. It's also personal discipline. It's just such a hard thing, and it's no knock on any of, of the young men or women who have been involved. It's just the time we live in, and... Again, a tribute to those who've been able to keep themselves on the floor. Uh, no question about it. And, you know, hopefully pretty soon. I, I, I'm really hoping that, you know, uh, that, that all athletes will have the opportunity, you know, to get the vaccination and, you know, give themselves a, another layer, you know, of protection. And, you know, there's a good-looking shot from Kyle Harris knocking down a big three. But, you know, we talked about getting these kids back on the floor 100% the way it used to be. And, you know, that's what it's all about, getting the fans. And if the fans were here right now, they'd be cheering on Lewis Griffith with a bomb from deep. Punch, counter punch. 12 minutes played in the first half. 20-20 vision on the scoreboard as we're all knotted up. And here is Ryan Salzberg. Snack bench calling out Damon's plays. Talk about scouting. Both of these staffs work so hard, and there's a reason these teams are elite. Here's Salzburg on the crossover. Salzburg stepped on the baseline on the pestering defense by Babel. And those household substitutions keep coming in and you know keeping those fresh legs going. Media timeout on the floor. Seven minutes, 30 seconds to play in the first half. We're all knotted up at 20. You're watching the ECC men's basketball tournament on the ECC Sports Network, powered by Blue Frame Technology. Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. It was my sophomore indoor season. It was the first year with our new head coach. And he comes in and he's like, we could be a national contending team if you guys work hard. And I heard him and I was like, well, I want to be a national champion. I want to be an All-American. And I bought in because he bought into our team. And I qualified to go to indoor nationals. I decided I wanted it. So I went and grabbed it. Seven minutes, 30 seconds to play here in the first half at Aquinas Hall ECC Men's Basketball Championship. St. Thomas Aquinas looking for its fifth championship in the last six years. Damon Wildcats looking for their first, but they have been all around it. And it would be extra sweet to do it in Stack's own building. 
you know, you look at the stats so far, and I, mean, I think the biggest one you look at is is Cisco being held to four points, you know, and, and three rebounds. And, you know, you're almost 13 minutes into this game so far. And here's a guy averaging 27 and 13. So you got to really uh, say, man, this stack team's doing a great job defensively and keeping him off and out of the game. Nice stutter step by Harris to the basket for the finish. Harris aggressively on the baseline, puts Damon back on top. Jamal Barnes as Lynch tries to post up on Ziv Bastin, getting some floor time here in the first half. Lynch spins, spins too hard off the glass. He's got the inside position, but hasn't been able to finish. Fasiero, good battle for the carom. You know, that's what we talked about just a second ago. You're holding Cisco to four points, your leading scorer of the All-American, but yet you're still holding on to a two-point lead with six minutes left to go in the first half. Dandola reaches in, reached across the body, and that's why that was a fairly easy call to make. Worth noting about Andrew Cisco, the Wildcats come in with an eight and four record. He's played 11 of Damon's 12 games. Vandola's first is Stack's fourth team foul. Talking about Cisco getting his in one of his 11 games this season, did he not reach double figures in rebounds and did he score less than 24 points? And that was a blowout against Mercy. He had fi only 15 points and nine rebounds. Nice jump hook in close by Baston back rims. That's why you say you know he's gonna get his. So if you're Mike McDonald, you probably like the fact that you're up two with him struggling. Cannavaio instead changes that to a tie score. Uh, what a tremendous athlete he is. And he just can catch the ball anywhere on the floor, gather himself, and get a good look at the basket. Andrew Sisko closing in on ECC records that are held by Stacks. Justin Reyes as Harris is called on the push off for the offensive foul, and that'll get Mike McDonald's ire raised. First foul on Harris. Dimitri Roberts into the corner for Singleton. Down low, Cannabio. Finish the thought about Cannabio right on cue. He came in the aftermath or at the very end of Justin Reyes' career here. And it's natural, it was natural, to try to make comparisons to him, which is just totally unfair. He's the first 2,000-1,000 man in ECC history. Cisco has become the second. And with an extra year of eligibility, he's going to break Reyes' records if he's able to play next year. Offensive foul! Dimitri Roberts took the full brunt of an Andrew Mason shoulder to the chest. That's two on Mason, and he's been the most prolific scorer early on for the Wildcats. You know, this is what St. Thomas Aquinas will do to you. They'll wear you down. You know, they're just going on a 4 nothing run, and it was because of their defense, and this is what they do to teams. And, you know, what looks to be a tight game, you blink, you step away, and most of the, all the fans are at home right now. You go to the refrigerator, you go get some lunch, you come back, it could be a 12-point game. Kind of bio short with the lefty hook. Fazio crosses over, finds Salzburg. Turnovers a nine to one, and St. Thomas Aquinas with an 8-0 lead and points off turnovers. Fazio short, Barnes for Singleton. Singleton kicks for Barnes for three. Good. Jamal Barnes, his first points of the game. He's a pure shooter. Stack's biggest lead is five. And there's that 7-0 run we talked about. You know, you get them fired up, and now you hear the... It almost sounds like there's a big crowd here, but that's the St. Thomas Aquinas bench. Harris held the ball out, and Jamal Barnes ties him up. Barnes is an interesting story for Stack. He came out at the beginning of this season shooting three-pointers uh, three like free throws. And he struggled a little bit in the latter half of the year, but it was his defense side that Tobin Anderson really wanted, to Im wanted him to improve, and you saw it right there. That's gotten him much more playing time. If he can't play both ends of the floor with Tobin Anderson, you're not going to play. There's a reason he's been coach of the year three times, and St. Thomas Aquinas has been perched along with the University of Bridgeport and Damon as the top teams in the league. There's a steal by Barnes as Vendola comes up with it. Barnes wide open for three. Rims out. Well, I almost feel like even those 425 left to go in the half, he knocked that three-pointer down. This place was going to erupt. Yeah, we saw that earlier on. I don't remember if it was Mason or Salzburg who missed the corner three. That looked like Damon was going to create some room. Now it's Stack doing it, and there's Cisco for the quick answer. And that's what Damon needs to come back to. Set up the two-man game with Cisco. 
get his back to the basket, and let him utilize that 6'9 footwork. Caraballo spins in a trio of Wildcats, yet escapes unscathed. Roberts directs traffic and decides to reset with plenty of time on the shot clock, now down to 10. Roberts, eyed by Fasiero, high screen, Caraballo, three-pointer by Roberts is good! Dimitri Roberts, his first from deep, fifth of the game for Stack. Well, now you're starting to get a little mix of everything. We, you know, we talked about the semi, seven people getting into double figures. Now you're starting to see everybody get involved in the offense for Stack. Beautiful feed from Fasagiro to Cisco for the layup. Cisco heating up. And that's why you keep going back to your big guy. Let him set up down low. He's the guy that could score, and he hurts you quietly. And I think we saw this in the last two trips. I personally think Cisco is, is even better when he can move toward the basket. His footwork is so good. He's got great hands. The post-up is hard, and a lot of guys hang on him, and he doesn't flop. Yeah, you catch a big guy in rhythm. Very difficult to stop. Singleton with a four-point lead goes around Harris and it's stolen by Tyler Hine. Hine seeing some action after returning from an injury. There's Jamal Barnes coming up with the steal, diving into the corner, and again that'll get your points from the coach. But meanwhile, we're going to take a brief timeout. Two minutes, 46 seconds to play in the first half. St. Thomas Aquinas on top by four. The score is 30 to 26. You're watching the ECC Men's Basketball Tournament Championship game on the ECC Sports Network, powered by Blue Frame Technology. My dad was a soccer coach and uh, bought this little book bag. I could uh, sit in the book bag, like facing backwards and with like, my legs out. So I'd be in his book bag when my dad coaches and the ball's going around. I'm like kicking at the ball in the back. My dad was like, we have a prodigy. So he put me into soccer and it just progressed from there. The catalyst was the opportunity to play soccer at a division two school. On my team, I thrive to work as hard as I can. I mean, whatever you do on the field, there's a positive correlation to whatever else you do. Be it personal relationships, homework, the way you carry yourself. I've changed since I got to King University. It's really helped me to develop as a leader. I think it's honestly the best thing that's ever happened. <laughs> Championship Sunday here in the East Coast Conference. Aquinas Hall is the site. Damon against Stack is the game. Steve Balson, Scott Green, glad you're with us on the ECC Sports Network. St. Thomas Aquinas with a four-point lead. And, you know, Scott, during the open, uh, actually before the game, we were discussing who we wanted to highlight. And Andrew Sisko for, for Damon was, was really the easy candidate. It's a lot of harder for St. Thomas Aquinas because there are so many weapons, and we're starting to see that come into play. Yeah, and, that, and that's what makes teams get worn down because you have to pick and choose who you're going to try to stop. And on a team like St. Thomas Aquinas, you, that, that goes 9-10 deep, it makes it very difficult. 10 on the shot clock is Salzburg with the dribble, guarded by Griffith. Throws up the shot, put off the backboard. Beautiful seam pass for Bavel, back for Griffith, and Salzburg tracking back nicely on defense, taps it into his own bench. It'll remain stack ball, but a good job for Damon in stopping that transition break that the Spartans so love to run. Lewis Griffith, such an unselfish player. Grant Singleton, left corner, there's Bavel, Hind guarding him. Both teams have played the man defense throughout the first half. Here's Grant Singleton, shot clock inside 10. Roberts backs up on Fasiero with five. Roberts off the high screen. Cisco was there, but Roberts goes around him and finishes. Well, I'll tell you what, I thought there might have been a little contact there, too. Roberts getting to the basket. Thought maybe Cisco kind of caught a little bit on him. And again, fouls are 4-4. Four, four. The officials are letting them play, and we've got a good basketball game here. So there have been a few of those that have been let go, and you saw Dimitri Roberts. We said it earlier of players like Mason. That time he used his outside ability. Pocket picked by Roberts, and the coast-to-coast -coast layup. But Roberts used his shooting ability, which we saw earlier on display, to draw Cisco out and go around him. Salzburg breaks the pressure, goes coast to coast, spins it up too hard, but Cisco is there to pick up the rebound. Not sure that wasn't entirely by accident. 
Well, those are a lot of the buckets that Cisco will get because he runs the floor extremely well. He runs rim to rim. And when you're a guy that can do that, you're going to get a lot of what we call garbage baskets. Now, what does that do for your teammates running the floor, knowing that the big guy is right there to clean up if you come up short? Let's you play a lot more relaxed as we hit the final minute in the first half. St. Thomas Aquinas by six. Damon held the lead early on. St. Thomas Aquinas has come back. And there's Grant Singleton attacking the basket. Ten for Singleton. Well, this has been a great several minutes for St. Thomas Aquinas, 16-6 in the last three minutes, and that's allowed them to really extend this lead. And Stack's ability to just put up points in a hurry is what one of the things that has made them so tough. Griffith to the basket, Fasayero with the block, we play on. Lynch cleans it up and puts it home. And that's why you run the floor, you never know what's going to happen. Spartans force the turnover on the pressure. It's a 10-point Stack lead. And this is the blitz that Stack puts on teams when they can go on this kind of run. Shot clock is off, and now they can hope for one with a double-digit lead in a half that just moments ago uh, was a tie game. Five on the clock. Here's Roberts. He pulls up and fires a three. Good! Dimitri Roberts before the buzzer. St. Thomas Aquinas on the run carries a 13-point lead into halftime. Roberts has been amazing all game long. And, you know, we, we talked about what St. Thomas can do. They wear you down, you step away, you go get some lunch in the kitchen, and you come back, and it's an 18-6 to run to close out the half. And, again, this is, not a, this is not a bug. It's a feature. St. Thomas Aquinas, teams can play them close, and you feel like you're right there with them, and then you look up at the board, as the case is right now. And again, you're down not double digits by 13 after the Roberts dagger at the buzzer. And correct that. That was 21-6. to six. This game was 22-20, a little over the three-and-a-half-minute mark. And look what St. Thomas Aquinas did. And what did they do? They played defense. They got out. They got in rhythm. And they played St. Thomas Aquinas basketball. Teams are in their respective locker rooms, and we'll see what wisdom their coaches are imparting to them. Still a long way to go in this one, obviously, but we are at halftime at Aquinas Hall with St. Thomas Aquinas holding a 41-28 lead in the first championship game ever played here at St. Thomas Aquinas College. We'll also give you a little bit of big picture before we take our break at halftime uh, and let you know that the NCAA selection show will be later on this evening, and it's a different year in, in every way, obviously. Only six teams, as opposed to the usual eight, are going to be uh, selected from the East region. In this week's final regular season rankings by the NCAA, St. Thomas Aquinas was number one, Bloomfield College in the CACC was number two, Damon was number three, and uh, Dominican College was number four. And then it gets a little bit uh, a little bit fuzzy after that, especially because the CACC's tournament, as we mentioned earlier, was canceled. It looks as though neither, uh, well, AIC was one and six, so they're, they're not going to be considerate, uh, in consideration. College of St. Rose, I don't think they're eligible. This is the, the time we live in. We're not really sure about very much. Uh, but we do know that both Damon and Stack will be going to the tournament, as they were going to be doing last year. Uh, Bloomfield and Dominican are going to be going. Stack was supposed to play Dominican in a first-round matchup uh, in, in the 2 7 game on that first Saturday that was canceled so uh, you look forward to seeing those two teams but the top two seeds in the region now get a bye to the Sunday game so there is a little bit more at stake here Damon wants to get into those top two and get that first round bye Stack right now is sitting in the catbird seat there's a lot of game left to play here but these teams are also playing for more well, you know, and, and and so many people, I think it's awesome that they're able to continue and get an NCAA tournament, have an East Coast Conference tribute to, you know, Bob Dranoff and his staff in the East Coast Conference to be able to get this going here. But the big picture, you have a lot of people out there that feel it's just not going to be the same. You're taking a lot of great teams from the NE10 who's not here, teams that would be here. Maybe there's teams that are in there that might not have, would, maybe they wouldn't have made the tournament. Who cares? You still have to win. You still have to find a way to get to the tournament and win ball games. You get to the NCAA, I don't care what they say, what school it is, you put that banner up on the wall saying NCAA 2021, and that's all that matters. And that goes for every facet of the game. These young men and women have taken the floor, and they are playing. So they're going to compete the exact same way as they always have. We've seen great compete level between these teams. And by the way, a congratulations uh, to Roberts Wesleyan College on the women's side 
for pulling the upset last night at Damon and capturing their first ever ECC Women's Basketball Tournament Championship. We're going to step aside and take a timeout, but we have a lot more action coming up for you. Halftime at Aquinas Hall with the score. St. Thomas Aquinas 41, Damon 28. You're watching the ECC Men's Basketball Championship on the ECC Sports Network, powered by Blue Frame Technology. Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can. And then they push harder. Because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are Division II. We go big. We give it everything we've got. And we win on the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive to achieve every goal we aim for because we want to be champions at the highest level, life. At Division II, the opportunities are here. Are you ready? You get to make a lot of different choices and become a leader and that's what Stack has definitely helped me to do. The environment here really helped me to develop my character my confidence, my individuality. The college has been very supportive as a student and athlete. To play on a field that minor league professional baseball players play at, it, it's, it's incredible. In classes, Stack really encourages students to work together and grow together. There's an opportunity for everybody here. Stack is a great school. Everybody should come. dad was a soccer coach and uh, bought this little book bag. I could uh, sit in the book bag like facing backwards and look like my legs out. So I'd be in his book bag when my dad coaches and the ball's going around I'm like kicking at the ball in the back and my dad's like, we have a prodigy. So he put me into soccer and it just progressed from there. The catalyst was the opportunity to play soccer at a Division II school. I love the team. They, uh, you know, they brought me in like I was one of their own. The professors help out so much. They actually care about developing me, not only so I just memorize the material and able to take a test, but am I able to apply the information? I don't feel nervous asking them, "Hey, I'm not going to be in class. Can you send me something?" And they're completely fine with it. And they understand, which is the best part. On my team, I thrive to work as hard as I can. I mean, whatever you do on the field, there's a positive correlation to whatever else you do. Be it personal relationships, homework, the way you carry yourself. I'm able to go out and become president of the Student Athletic Advisory Committee. SAC is consistent of like a ton of different backgrounds, and we'll come up with cool ideas for like fundraisings and having the opportunity to raise money for Make-A-Wish and knowing it's going towards a good cause. It not only motivates me, but it motivates the whole community. I've changed since I got to King University. It's really helped me to develop as a leader. I think it's honestly the best thing that's ever happened. probably learn more from him than he's learned from us. I think they're a real important part in my life. I can't describe it. It feels amazing. Team Impact is a national nonprofit that connects kids living with serious or chronic illness with college athletic teams, forming lifelong bonds and life-changing outcomes. Break it! Break it! 
Spread the word about Team Impact. You have the power to change lives. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. I was the kid who would do surgery on my teddy bear and like have my sister be my patient and I would wear the stethoscope and the lab coat. I was that kid. Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Dr. News, who is the head of the biology department, definitely has had a huge impact over the past two years I've been in the lab. He took a chance on me and actually gives me the power to actually do things. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. I've had so many experiences with underprivileged people and just seeing that they want the basic things that people get out of life. And if I can help in any way, that just kind of warms my heart. That's why I want to be a doctor, to serve those who have been dealt a bad hand. It was my sophomore indoor season. It was the first year with our new head coach. And he comes in and he's like, we could be a national contending team if you guys work hard. And I heard him and I was like, well, I want to be a national champion. I want to be an All-American. And I bought in because he bought into our team. And I qualified to go to Indoor Nationals. It was just because I bought into myself, because someone bought into me, I decided I wanted it. So I went and grabbed it. Hi there. We have 60 seconds to tell you about Damon College, so let's get started. Damon College is located on Main Street in Amherst, New York, but we're more than just a physical campus. We're Western New York's premier health science educator. We're also home to amazing liberal arts programs and Western New York's premier Division II athletics. And every day we're preparing students for a world full of opportunity. Damon offers over 65 undergraduate and graduate programs, ranging from art and animation to athletic training, nursing, physical therapy, and more. Damon College is test optional, so you don't need an SAT or ACT to apply. Above all else, Damon is a community. We help our students build their legacy. Our students want to contribute to a better world around them. We give them the tools, critical thinking skills, experiences, and resources to do just that. So, if you're ready to make an impact, make sure to check out Damon College. Visit damon.edu to get started. We can't wait to see you. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. 
My path to a college degree would have been completely different had I not run Division II cross country for the University of Mount Olive. Having an athletic and academic scholarship was key for my success. Our coaches were really helpful with balancing out my academics and athletics. I decided to attend graduate school because I wanted to become an athletic director. So receiving the postgraduate scholarship through the NCAA provided me with the flexibility to choose the school that I wanted. So now I know that I can accomplish any goal that I set for myself. Halftime at Aquinas Hall, where the St. Thomas Aquinas College Spartans, in search of their fifth championship in six seasons, have a 41-28 lead over the Damon Wildcats. Let's take a look at our halftime stats. Well, let me look at these stats. I mean, they talk about differentiated, and they're so off-skew, because if you look at what they were... It, it, 10 minutes into it, and then you look at what they were in the last three minutes. Um, I mean, a lot of the stats are very similar, but I think the biggest number you look at is 15-0 points off turnovers for St. Thomas Aquinas. You know, we talked about that. 13 turnovers in the first half for Damon, only two for St. Thomas Aquinas. The shooting really started heating up. They got to a slow start for St. Thomas Aquinas. Really came on at the end, and I think that was a big number, and hence... You know, this is why they have a big run, and, you know, this game was a lot closer than it really looks right here on the scoreboard. Yeah, with seven minutes to go in that first half, Damon was up 22-20. to And St. Thomas Aquinas, as my partner Scott Green mentioned, on a 21-6 to run over that last seven minutes. 21 points in seven minutes, for those who might not know the math, is a pretty impressive number against an impressive Damon team. Quick look at the scorers at halftime for St. Thomas Aquinas. Dimitri Roberts has 14, Grant Singleton has 10, Osbel Canabayo has 8. For Damon, it's Andrew Sisko with 10 points and 5 rebounds, so he's on track for his normal averages. Andrew Mason had 9, but a big turning point, Mason got that second foul. When he went to the bench, that changed things a bit for the Wildcats. Kyle Harris with 7, only 4 scorers on the sheet for Damon as the second half gets underway, and again, that speaks to the depth advantage that Stack has. Damon on the defensive side now with the road black uniforms white letters and numbers trimmed in blue moving from right to left in the second half St. Thomas Aquinas in the Vegas gold with maroon letters and numbers trimmed in yellow Dimitri Roberts pump fix Fonsiero off the ground Roberts rattles at home from 15. Boy I'll tell you I don't think Roberts even took a half time he just went right in knocked it down to close the half and then comes right out to open the half. How much does that affect a team Scott you know you, you played the game you know the game you come out of the locker room with a game plan, you have an idea, and the other team hits the first basket on you. Does it keep you on your heels, or are you still going to gonna try to keep in that flow and turn the tempo up? Well, I think what it does, it takes the, it puts a pin and takes a little bit of air out of you, you know, to get things started. But you have to regroup. This is championship basketball. You have to find a way to be resilient and come right back and play. And we've told the story of Damon trying to climb that mountain. Well, you have to overcome adversity to do that. I think every championship team will tell you that. St. Thomas Aquinas did it in their first couple of seasons under Tobin Anderson, and they finally got to the top. Roberts on a beautiful cut for the layup. The Spartans are firing on all eight. Oh, yeah, you get that L.A. cut going on, and you know he's able to step right in, and what a half coming out is for Roberts. And right now... 18 minutes and 54 seconds to play. St. Thomas Aquinas up by 17. We know Damon, especially with Mason and Salzburg as three-point shooters, can put points up in a hurry. But St. Thomas Aquinas right now has them on the ropes and is looking to deal some haymakers and pull away in this one. Well, Dimitri Roberts here sitting at 19 points, and we just started the second half. Here's Mason. Fires a three. Good! Mm. Mason finally gets something going for the Wildcats. Let's see if they can build on that down by 14. Lynch was alone for a moment. Finds Griffith for three. Good. Lou Griffith, second of the game. Again, St. Thomas Aquinas right back. Uh, Damon has to find a way to close out that weak side guard. You know, you can't allow a guy like Lewis Griffith to set, set his seams, get his feet going, and take that open look. That wild shot by Harris is off the mark. He was impressive Friday night in the win against Roberts. That no-look pass by Griffith. Now, Canabayo is saying that it went off Harris, and I think it might have. We actually have a pretty good angle on that, and I do believe there's replay capability today because there is a monitor at the scores table. I get confirmation from ECC publicist Casey Rafferty, so apparently they're not going to go to it in this case. So it is a turnover, and that is something that St. Thomas Aquinas has seen very little of, only their third of the game.
Salzburg hands outside for Mason. Lynch read that, and Cisco somehow wrestled it away from him. Mike McDonald calls time, so 17:48 to go, and I think McDonald senses the urgency of making sure his team keeps its game high because they can get a chance to come back on snap. We have a media timeout on the floor with 17:48 to go in the second half. St. Thomas Aquinas 48, Damon 33. You're watching the ECC Men's Basketball Championship on the ECC Sports Network, powered by Blue Frame Technology. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. Steve Balson, Scott Green back with you in Spark Hill, New York, Rockland County. A crisp winter day, but nice and warm in here as these teams heat up. You know, Scott, in the first half, when right before Stack embarked on that run, the, the things that we noted were the turnover differential and that Damon was shooting in the low 50s and Stack was shooting in the high 30s. And it basically seemed like whichever team got that number righted had the potential of going on a big run. And so far, it's been St. Thomas Aquinas. Oh, without a doubt. And I think three-point shooting has been the big turnaround for St. Thomas Aquinas. And, you know, seven for, they're 50% now from the, from three. It's seven for 14. And, you know, this is a team, actually more eight for 15. They got two so far this half. So, you know, when you start knocking those down, you're going to, you can't fall behind like this. To Damon's side of the ledger, they do have the three-point threat potential, as we saw from Mason earlier. Stack with the ball. Catabayo finds Lynch. Lynch backs in on Mason. Beautiful handoff for Singleton, but it's waved off before the shot. Referee Mel Chetham giving it back to the stack bench. So Fasiero picks up his second. He has managed to avoid foul trouble. He's also managed to avoid the score sheet. Fasiero averaging just under 15 a game. Boy, the Spartans are threading these passes through nothing. Boy, what a block by Harris on Canabayo. Canabayo fights his way up, and he's fouled on the play. You know, that speaks again. We, we were talking about this in the open. This is the same crew, officiating crew, that did that game last Saturday. Let the teams play four fouls each way in the first half. Only two so far here in the second half, both on Damon. It's going to send Canabayo to the line. And I think we have a representative basketball game because of it. Well, yeah, I, I think the refs are doing a fantastic job today here in the ECC championship. And, you know, it allows teams to get inside, into a rhythm. When you're blowing the whistle in every possession, teams don't have an opportunity to get into that rhythm and, you know, get into the sequence of the game. And I think both teams are, are able to do that today. And I think what also matters so much is that these teams saw this crew last Saturday. And what that does for you is you know what's going to happen. Referee Mel Chetham made a call. He called a flop on Osbel Catabayo early in that game. And I think that set the tempo. Players stayed on their feet and played. And they know what to expect from this crew today. And they are they have been very consistent with what they've done throughout. Spartans show some pressure. Now that's not the full bedlam trap. Ten second violation. That's what it is. St. Thomas Aquinas likes to try to drain the shot clock a little bit and make opponents work for every inch of the floor, especially when you've got a short bench as Damon does. That time, Salzburg just lost track. Yeah, you know, and the coach and me came out again, and I, and I watched them across half court, and I saw that back foot go. I'm pointing right at it. I said, hey, I'm not supposed to make that call. There are instincts, my friend, that we are going to carry with us to long <laughs> after we have any faculties left. Yeah, you got that right. Stack with a 17-point lead in the ball. When the Spartans are in sync, they are tough. Cisco with a hand on Cannabio, and the shot clock expires. So Cannabio backed his way in, and Cisco stayed with him all the way. I mentioned earlier that for St. Thomas Aquinas, Kevin Lynch got the ECC Defensive Player of the Year. I think a lot of that had to do with his attempts his guarding efforts on Andrew Cisco. That is a tough matchup. Lynch giving away some height. He's a big strong guy. But he and Cisco have had some tremendous battles and I think there's a lot of respect between those two young men as Cisco now faces Canabayo. Griffith reaches in and got a hand. Second time Griffith has been called for a foul reaching in 
on Andrew Cisco. You know, this is the point of the game. I know there's 16 24 left, a lot of time in this ball game, but you're trailing by 17 to stack right now. Damon has to start to make some statements, start winning some possessions, and chip away at this deficit. And get some stops. They put some shots in, and Fasiero hits the hoop, and he'll go to the line. His first points of the game come with 16 23 to go. And if he can get going, that'll be good news for the Wildcats. And that's one way to do it. You work inside and you make yourself a, you get yourself an extra point. And we take a look at what a great inbounds pass and able to finish that off balance. Fasiero's first trip to the line today, 75% on the season. Front rim, back rim, and out. And a lane violation is called on Dimitri Roberts. So Fasiero will get the bonus shot. And those are the mental mistakes that drive opposing coaches crazy. You know, being able to give up a shot at the end of a shot clock and the other one of lane violations. The second one is also off. Cisco taps it out, but Singleton is there on the receiving end. So Fasiero missing both times. Again, he's a 75% shooter. Boy, that basket counts. It went in anyway as Grant Singleton. The Spartans are showing offensive looks right now that they don't show very often during the year. Tobin Anderson is emptying the playbook for this championship game. Yeah, without a doubt. And you, and you know what? This is a kind of game where you have to do that. And the execution's there. I mean, it, it is uh, it is not a brand of ball you see at D2 very often, and these Spartans are running it exceedingly well. They're up by 17. Harris, this time, breaks the timeline. Mason, pestered by Vandola. Salzburg, he's not getting much room today with Lavelle out on him. Cisco backs Catabio in, leans in, the roller is short, gets his own rebound and forces it up, and he's fouled on the play. And what Damon's doing right now, too, is they're working every possession right to the end, and when they draw the fouls, that stops the clock, and that takes away the running game of St. Thomas Aquinas. And that does bring us to a media timeout on the floor. 15-48 to play in the second half. St. Thomas Aquinas on top, 52-35. to You're watching the ECC Men's Basketball Championship on the ECC Sports Network, powered by Blue Frame Technology. For me, just kind of it was the glue that kept my family together, I feel like. I don't know what it was that drew me in, but after I started playing for a while and started seeing some early success as a little kid, to see how much it meant to my parents to see me play the game and, and try to make a difference was really what fueled me to keep playing and, and stay competitive. Being a triple major is not necessarily easy, but at the same time it is what you make it. Being a tighter knit university, I have a lot of classes with the same professors, so they know me pretty well. I think it's that personal relationship that really helped me to thrive as a student. I was able to come here and, and get my triple major as well as play a super high level of baseball against some of the best players in the country. There's a lot of options here in Division II with a lot of great ball players and a lot of great people and they make sure that they give you every opportunity to succeed on and off the field. Fifteen minutes, forty-eight seconds to play here in the second half. Andrew Cisco will step to the foul line for two free throws. St. Thomas Aquinas up by seventeen. Steve Boston, Scott Green, glad you could join us on the ECC Sports Network. Cisco comes up shy. The second is good. Here's Dimitri Roberts, pass the hero, guarding him. Here's Griffith for three, that's off the mark. Trying to see what kind of defense that was. It looked like a matchup. Because Fassi Euro was at the top of the arc, just getting out onto everybody. Griffith's shot is off, but Stack has the rebound on the baseline inbound with 20 on the shot clock. Now it looks like more of a straight man as Cannavio holds outside. Again, the lack of depth probably limits Mike McDonald's options a little bit. You might start to see some pressure for a different look. Nice steal there by Cisco on the overplay. Right now he's got to stay with the game plan. Get some stops and get some runs. 
Mason with Bavel on, on him. Fasiero guarded by Vandola. Fasiero almost blew a tire there, but we play on. Mason into the blocks, kicks out. Fasiero for three. Good. Sean Fasiero didn't start out artistically, but he's gotten his team within 13. Well, that's a nice little run here for Damon. I mean, this is what we talked about. We said if this is the time, they got to start making some statements. And these last two minutes, they've been able to do so. We mentioned earlier St. Thomas Aquinas trying to deal the knockout blow. It looks like a 1-3-1 is what Damon is in right now. They were in it briefly on the last possession. Pavel backdoor cut, reverse layup, good in the foul. Elijah Pavel on the scoreboard, and he'll go to the line with a chance for more. Well, you know, that was textbook on how you beat a 1-3-1. You get behind the back guy, and, and when Cisco steps up into the paint, that allowed him to get behind, and we talked about Pavel being very, very athletic. And I remember calling his games, and we take a look at this again. And what Bovell was able to do is run that rover position, and as soon as you get the blind side, you're able to get behind the defense and finish the play. And, you know, Elijah Bovell, I love watching his game in those days in Baldwin and those packed gyms on Friday night, 7 o'clock games, and he knows a little something about championships. They've been to several Nassau County championships. They've been to several Long Island championships, and they've been to Glen Falls. He's a winner. Salzburg pump fakes. Cisco now goes to the basket, steps through and lays it in. Andrew Cisco gets that kind of room. You can put the points on the board. 13 point stack lead. Back to that 1 3 1. Barnes in the corner. Now he's double teamed. Spartans moving the ball quickly. That's a good way to beat any zone. Bavel for three. That grazes the backside of the rim, and Catabayo obediently tracks it down. And the shot clock. Did not start on the reset. The basket obviously will not count. Rebounding total in the first half was relatively even. Damon with a 19-15 advantage. That definitely grazed the rim. That's a, that's a question they're asking. Yeah, that, that that's what they're looking at right now. That ball hit the back of that hit the side of that rim and skipped off and. I think that's what Coach Tobin uh, is, is looking to discuss with the official. You know, they're going to put 11 on the shot clock, and again, we just happen to have a really good angle of that here. Vendola with time winding down, rattles out the three. Here's Mason, Harris. Harris gets a step on Singleton to the glass short. Cisco is wrestled away by Bavell, and that gets a rise out of the stack bench. Well, the fouls are definitely picking up here in the second half, and I think that just speaks to the intensity level of both teams attacking the basket. Well, you know, these are the type of plays you have to finish these. When you get an opportunity of an easy chippy like that, you grab it, but then you get Cisco on the rebound. You know, you're going to have hands in his face. You're going to have hands in his, in his chest. You know, the only way to stop him. But his non-shooting foul. Jamal Barnes on the scoreboard. That's a floater by Salzburg. That's how it looked like it would have been on, on Bovell. So maybe they called Barnes on the backside. Yeah, they got him beforehand. Bovell was the end. His it was stripping was clean. It was called on the first part. And thus the reaction. So Damon is back with an 11. Trailed by as many as 17. Lynch fires a corner three. That's short. But again, that's a shot he can make but not the top shooter on the Spartan offense. Fasiero in traffic, finds Salzburg open for three. That one's off. Salzburg is one of those players that's gonna have to heat up. Wildcats back within 11, Grant Singleton to change that with the finger roll, good in the foul. Fasiero called for the block. Man, Grant Singleton, he is just showing his pure athleticism this afternoon. Coast to coast, getting the ball in traffic and being able to take it right to the rim. And this is what makes this young man so special. He gets up there, takes it right to the defense. His hand was up above the rim. And that's three on Fazaguro, who is also a little incredulous. Team fouls four each way now. Now Mike McDonald letting the officiating crew know his feelings. 13 points for Singleton as he completes the three-point play. 
Damon is more in sync now, starting to get something going, but they're still down by 14. Cisco faces Lynch, clears out, and an offensive foul is called on Cisco. <clears throat> Yeah, well that that's really what you call. Hey, I'm six foot nine, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to body up and make my safe myself about eight foot six. And he was trying to clear some space there. He's smiling about it too. And a great exchange because he and Kevin Lynch walked down the floor next to each other, and I think they might have said a word to each other. They were both smiling. Barnes, right corner three is good. Jamal Barnes, his second of the game, stacked by 17. And Salzburg can't save it out of bounds. The Bedlam pressure forces a turnover. And now St. Thomas Aquinas has taken the blow and offered one back. 12.01 to go. Still early, but the clock's going to become a factor soon if Damon can't find a way to chip into this lead. And we keep talking about the game of runs, you know, 21 to 6 to end that first half. Here we go. There you got the end of the trim to 11 points. And now after another 6 0 run, St. Thomas Aquinas putting themselves back in control. Shot clock down at four is Roberts between the legs with two. With one, gets fast to in the air. He pulls back and Roberts hits a long two. You know, and that's one of those where if you're defending Roberts, and, and you just put your hands up and you say, what else could I possibly have done? But just another three for him. Fazio pulled back. Mason for three with the answer. Andrew Mason has five on the day. Fazio pulled up at the end. He's got the height advantage over Roberts, but with three fouls now, we said he wasn't in foul trouble. Well, he picked up a couple of quick ones. Vendola got a break by Cisco blocking that because he blew a tire on the way to the basket. And I would have doubted that shot would have gone in, but Cisco swats it out. St. Thomas Aquinas ball when we return. 19 on the shot clock. There is a break in the action. 11 minutes, 10 seconds to play in the second half. St. Thomas Aquinas, 62, Damon, 46. You're watching the ECC Men's Basketball Championship game on the ECC Sports Network, powered by Blue Frame Technology. Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. It was my sophomore indoor season. It was the first year with our new head coach. And he comes in and he's like, we could be a national contending team if you guys work hard. And I heard him and I was like, well, I want to be a national champion. I want to be an All-American. And I bought in because he bought into our team. And I qualified to go to indoor nationals. I decided I wanted it. So I went and grabbed it. Steve Balson, Scott Green back with you. And if you notice the score change on your video screen, whatever device you may be watching on, there's a reason for that. The last break, the officials reviewed Dimitri Roberts' shot and converted it to a three-pointer. So looks can be deceiving from here. It didn't look like it, but they went to the video replay for the first time today, and Roberts gets an extra point on the ledger, and that counts for the Spartans as well. Lead up to 17. Singleton with the clock winding down, airs out Lynch. Now Lynch fires a three, it's good! Boy, Lynch made that three, turned around, looked up at us. It's like, hey man, we didn't say anything to you. <laughs> Probably got a text because I said he doesn't usually shoot those shots. I know we have some very attentive fans out there. Okay, all right. I might be looking at the bench, though. We're, you know, we are in their line of vision here. You know they what? literally hey. sit right under us. Hey, we saw it. it. was a good shot, man. Great form. Great confidence. Uh, we call them as we see them. Cisco starts to move in. Kicks to the corner. Fancy your old ball fake. Harris straight away for three. That one's off the mark. Vandola taps the rebound to Barnes. Stack by 20. Biggest lead of the game. 
Winner takes home the ECC championship. Singleton for three. Long rebound, Barnes. Roberts for three. That grazes the rim, and Mason with the rebound. Midway through, half number two, stack by 20. Salzburg for three, that's short. And Salzburg has been such a good secondary point producer and has not found that range. And it's not the building, he was here last weekend and he was stellar. Tyler Hine and Justin Johnson in for Damon Espanciero and Salzburg get a rest. Elijah Pavel back in for St. Thomas Aquinas. Jamal Barnes with a productive few minutes has a seat. Well, it's obvious when you got a 20-point lead, Scott, that, that you just try to keep doing what you're doing, but what in the world can Damon do at this point? Well, I mean, right now, you got to try to you know, work for those three-point opportunities down low, keep getting the ball inside to Cisco, and then, most important, they got to defend. As Kevin Lynch did on Cisco right there, I think the default is going to be to try to go through Cisco, but Damon has been playing a half-court game again with a shorter bench, and it could be hard to make up a big deficit even if they can get the run going. And Singleton using that explosive speed on the baseline draws a foul on Cisco. That's number three. So Brant Singleton at the line. First is good. Osbel Cannabio and Lou Griffith back in for stack. Kevin Lynch gets a well-earned rest. Antonio Vendola. He's been a very solid defensive standout for stack today. Not on the score sheet yet. But his team's up by 21. Here's Johnson. Cisco. Has some room, now thunders in on Cannabio. Goes to the basket for the layup and the foul. And Drew Sisko, using that big frame with authority that time, draws the foul on Cannabio. Only the first on Cannabio. So five team fouls on St. Thomas Aquinas, six on Damon with 9.01 to go. Sisko, front rims but gets the roll. Now four of seven from the stripe today. Nine minutes to go, stacked by 18, and the clock starts to become a factor as Hind reached out, got a piece, actually got the body on Griffith. Tyler Hines first. And now it's Mike McDonald saying his piece as foul number seven sends Griffith to the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Griffith 12 of 14 from the season, 86%. Front rim, back rim, and good on the first one. The second, good. So Lou Griffith with eight points. Doesn't always score often, but when he does, it's a big time in the game. He had 18 against Malloy on Friday. The stack dropped the hammer early. Hind into the corner. Here's Mason. Mason bumped by Bavel. They play on, and Mason, unfazed, hits the little runner. Uh, tough shot there. And, you know, this St. Thomas Aquinas defense, I mean, it's one of those swarming defenses, you know, where you have to be prepared to jump to the ball and, and protect it at all times. Well, Canabayo went to the basket but forgot something. Here's Johnson on the run. Numbers back, three on three, left side. Harris left wide open, fires a three. That's off the back rim. Singleton ahead of the field. For the layup. That's that breakaway ability that Singleton has to take the ball behind a slew of defenders and just outrace them down the floor. Ball in hand. Stacked by 20 with eight to go. You know, and just to think, a couple minutes ago, you know, Damon was able to cut this uh, deficit to 11. And, uh, you know, and at that point, St. Thomas Aquinas just regrouped and went back to the game that they were playing towards the end of the first half. 
Harris's pass was over Cisco's head, and that's a that's a tough job to do. Five on the shot clock. Mason drives in traffic. Cisco coming from the weak side is foul on the play. So again, flaring Cisco out on the wing and having him going to the basket where he's been very effective. Time out on the floor, seven minutes, 34 seconds to play. St. Thomas Aquinas in the driver's seat with the score 71-51. We're going to take a break. You're watching the East Coast Conference Men's Basketball Championship on the ECC Sports Network, powered by Blue Frame Technology. You get to make a lot of different choices and become a leader, and that's what staff has definitely helped me to do. The environment here really helped me to develop my character, my confidence, my individuality. The college has been very supportive as a student and athlete. We play on a field that minor league professional baseball players play at, it, it's, it's incredible. In classes, Stack really encourages students to work together and grow together. There's an opportunity for everybody here. Stack is a great school. Everybody should come. Steve Balson, Scott Green back with you on Championship Sunday. St. Thomas Aquinas College playing host for the first time in program history for the ECC Tournament Final. And right now, they hold a 20-point lead. Damon has seen Stack four times previously in the ECC tournament, three times in the semifinal, once in the championship game, and it has been all about St. Thomas Aquinas. Starting to look like a long shot for Damon to break that skid. Yeah, it's going to be a very difficult to come back, but this is uh, 20 points, at the, but the pace that these guys play, they were able to erase that 19-point lead earlier, and, go, and we're going on an 8 nothing run. You know, this is what they're going to need to do here in, in, in 7.34 left. St. Thomas Aquinas has turned the ball over six times in this game. And you have to believe that Damon's going to have to find some takeaways somewhere in order to get a run going. It's not an offense that has been geared necessarily toward outscoring opponents. Right now, 52 points on the board is where at about seven and a half minutes to go. Cisco finds the second. He's now made four straight. Clock is St. Thomas Aquinas' ally, but I don't think they're going to use it too much yet as Barnes misses the three. Cannavio tips it out to, to Griffith. And St. Thomas Aquinas resets and restarts. That time Salzburg steps in, so the 1-3-1 does force a turnover. Salzburg thought about it, but Griffith closed quickly. Johnson. Barnes got a hand on it, tipped it away, but it goes right to Mason. Mason in traffic. Tapped away by Vendola. But a bit of a late whistle as Vendola got a piece of Mason on his way to the basket. You know, if you're Tobin Anderson right now, you're trying to tell your kids, hey, man, we don't want to get fouls. We don't want to stop the clock. If we want to keep the clock moving, move your feet, get between you and the basket, stop the stop dribble drive penetration. But we don't want to stop the clock. Let them put points on the board with, without the clock moving. Seven team fouls each way, so Mason hits the front end of the one and one. The second catches the lip of the rim and falls through. Momentary delay for reasons unknown, and now we play on with inside seven to go, and Stack's lead trimmed to 16. Vendola left corner three, that's too hard. Canabayo is hammered on the blocks by Cisco, and Penasoloco just shakes his head and says, let's play on. I think there's a chance Cisco might have gotten away with one. Here's Griffith. Catabayo looking for the seam. Vendola, Griffith. Tremendous ball movement. Catabayo loses it, regains it. Reverse layup is short. And this time, something possibly of the makeup call variety on Cisco. Well, if the first one where he got sent three feet away didn't get it, this one definitely would. And that is number four on Andrew Sisko. So with six minutes and 28 seconds to go, Sisko is a player who does not foul out very often. Now he's having a chat with Mel Chetham. A Chetham chat, if you will. Cannabio misses the front end. Actually, a two-shot foul as Cannabio was in the act. Now two of three from the line on the day.
Cannabio apparently has some blood showing somewhere. So Stack is going to have to replace him at the line. Or they're going to wait. And the teams are going to the benches. So they are going to let Cannabio be tended to. Again, the training staff is usually located in the corner by the home bench here at Aquinas Hall. This year, the open side of the gym to our left. Uh, there's a big tent set up there, and that's where the training staff now resides. That's usually full of fans, as you can see Cannavale being tended to there. And, th and this is a gym of tight quarters. I mean, you look around, you got you got about a three-foot distance between the end line and the and the wall. You know, uh, th I mean, this is definitely a, a home, what you call a home field advantage because this is a tough place to play. You know, in normal times, you put some crowd in here, it gets very loud. I mean, at times you would think there was a crowd in here just by the teams cheering, you know, and then you got the short distance to the locker room. So but I've always liked St. Thomas Aquinas set up and kind of gives you that old hometown feeling, you know, and then you're going to bring a lot of people in. You got the, the cheering section behind the basket where we just saw the training center, you know, and I've seen that place uh, with a number of people as well. But the Spartan Army resides in force, and they make this uh, quite a difficult place for opponents to come in. Damon is one of just three teams over the past five years to have two road victories in this building. You know, the only other place that I remember was always a tough place to play. You know, in the early ECC days was going over to Adelphi's gym. The the tiny gym had the little gymnasium. track, yep. the little track up on top, and you know, another tight quarters. And, you know, that was another uh, real home field advantage. And, you know, when Jim Ferry coached there. Jim Ferry, now the head coach of Penn State. So Boy, they had some tremendous teams in that little gymnasium. You know, I've coached uh, many years against Jim Ferry, and, you know, it's always great to see the success. Steve Clifford in the NBA and, you know, getting an opportunity to see these guys coaching at the next level. Steve Hain, former Dowling coach, is one of the top assistants over at Rutgers, and what a job they're doing over there, Rutgers, in the uh, – you know, the big Big Ten. I mean, it's just an amazing job. Turnaround program. Justin Johnson's layup gets it to a 15-point game, so Damon is chipping away. Roberts left alone. Ten-foot floater is good. And what is the way you find the Z seam ex expose that zone. Now what a game for Demetrius Roberts. I mean, 23 points on the game. You know, and I'll tell you, the, the, the shot he hit to end the first half, the three, and then to come out and open the second half with the three, I mean, that, that was a change of pace. The, you know, the whole tempo of this game. You look at Dimitri Roberts, you look at Lewis Griffith, you look at Osbel Cannabio, there, Grant Singleton, there are so many guys on this team that have had huge games. Cisco almost used a tremendous length to his advantage on the rebound, but instead... It goes out of bounds, and right now with 5.08 left, Damon can ill afford empty trips. Trailing by 17. Cannabio and Singleton in for St. Thomas Aquinas, along with Griffith, Roberts, and Vendola. Fasiero, Salzburg, Mason, Cisco, and Johnson for the Damon Wildcats. Fasiero comes away with the steal. So the 1-3-1 has forced a few turnovers. Johnson, left corner three. Good! Well, there's a faction we haven't expected to hear from. Johnson averaging three per game. He's got the last five. If you're going to get a lift from anybody, you know, just someone has to step up. They don't care who it is. Griffith fires a three and misses. And you see there, Stack not worried about the clock yet. They're up 14 and looking to play through the end of regulation. And into overtime if need be. Cisco to the basket. Gets the roll and the foul. And this could be the Wildcats run with 4.24 to go. It's back to a dozen. Well, you're Andrew Cisco. You can't allow him play back to the basket. Let him penetrate and turn. And this is what he does so well. And he gets down, gets himself in position to use his legs to finish. Caraballo whistled for his third. Cisco completes the three-point play. His free throw shooting may be indicative of his game as a whole. You saw it was off balance. Even when the shots went in, they were hitting a lot of rim in the first half. Now he's in rhythm. Now he's in sync. And we'll see if he can get his team back into this game. They've whittled it to 11. That's as close as they've been in the second half. Just under 420 to play. Damon Bench leading the defense champ. 
back, now using some clock. Spreading the floor, Vendola, right corner three. That's off. Stack has run cold from outside. That's zero. Crosses over to the basket. Layup attempt is off. And the Spartans got a break. That ball hung on the rim, and Cisco overran it. And Griffith came away with the rebound. Griffith may have gotten away with a walk there. Canabayo to the glass for the finish. You know, that's what we're talking about with Damon. They've had two opportunities in the last couple of minutes to finish an easy one here like this. And he'll throw that one down. But, you know, you have to finish and get yourself under that 10-point mark. You know, they've been hit. They've been flirting with 11 on a couple of occasions, but they got to get themselves under the double digits. And the Spartans could have backed up into the half-court defense there and used the clock with the 13-point lead, but they put that pressure on Tobin Anderson and his team playing to win. And that time, Cisco took advantage by breaking out ahead of the field and getting it back to 11 points. Singleton steps through and floats it home. You have to give Damon credit as Tobin Anderson calls the timeout with three minutes and 11 seconds to go. You got to give Damon credit for the run, but they've got to get the stops. And right now, we'll see if they have it in them. Three minutes, 11 seconds to go in the second half championship Sunday. St. Thomas Aquinas, 78, Damon, 65. You're watching the ECC Men's Basketball Championship game on the ECC Sports Network, powered by Blue Frame Technology. My dad was a soccer coach and uh, bought this little book bag. I could uh, sit in the book bag, like facing backwards and look like my legs out. So I'd be in his book bag when my dad coaches and the ball's going around, I'm like kicking at the ball in the back. My dad was like, we have a prodigy. So he put me into soccer and it just progressed from there. The catalyst was the opportunity to play soccer at a Division II school. On my team, I thrive to work as hard as I can. I mean, whatever you do on the field, there's a positive correlation to whatever else you do. Be it personal relationships, homework, the way you carry yourself. I've changed since I got to King University. It's really helped me to develop as a leader. I think it's honestly the best thing that's ever happened. <laughs> One hundred ninety-one seconds separating St. Thomas Aquinas from possibly its fifth East Coast Conference Tournament Championship in six years. That's how much time Damon has to erase a 13-point deficit and get to the top of the mountain for their first time. Bring a title home to Main Street. Cisco backs in on Lynch aggressively but misses the layup. Rebound comes out for Fasagiro. Fasagiro off the glass. That won't go. It's back out for Harris. Third opportunity for the Wildcats. They're going to need a basket soon. Fasagiro pump fakes on the three and Roberts is called for the block. Foul number nine on St. Thomas Aquinas will bring Fasagiro to the line for the front end of a one and one. Roberts a little slow to get up. Took a pretty good hit there. Stepped in and tried to draw the charge on Fasagiro but instead he'll give up the free throws. Well, you can't say Damon didn't get opportunities. You know, they, they have missed so many chippies in the second half that, you know, this game could have swung either way. We mentioned Roberts standing at about 5'8". His mouth is at shoulder level for a lot of his opponents, and he might have taken a pop in the jaw there as we saw him dabbing at his mouth with the jersey. Fasihiro with a one-on-one. -on -one. Damon cannot afford any empty trips right now, down by 13. And Fasihiro misses the front end. St. Thomas Aquinas trying to take advantage. Here's Griffith. Steps through, cross-court feed for Roberts. Again, spreading that zone. Vendola, right corner, three is good! Antonio Vendola stacked by 16 with two and a half. And this is what we talked about in the beginning of the game. You never know which possession you're going to come down and who's going to knock down a shot. And, you know, he started to see a little bit of everybody getting involved in this. St. Thomas Aquinas with pressure on the inbound pass, now backing up to try to run some clock. Taking Damon eight seconds to cross the timeline. Down by 16, 210 to go. Wildcats need to start attacking the basket. Cisco tries, and he rattles home the short jumper. You know, what a quiet game he had, not from a statistical standpoint. You know, I mean, here he's put up 27 points. He's right at his, his season average, but he does it so quietly. Nine rebounds to go with that. And as we said earlier, Cisco's just going to get his. 
it's whether the secondary scoring can help enough. Mason's had 19, but that's about it as Singleton back rims the elbow jumper. Coming up on a minute and a half. It's a 14-point game. Cisco steps into a three. That one's off. Singleton with the rebound. And now the Spartans can run the clock. The bench starts to feel it as they up, they're up and applaud, and Damon is not fouling down by 14 with a minute 20 to go. So they're going to let Stack run the clock. Roberts kicks to the corner for Vendola. He recaptures, puts it up on the baseline. I think Fasiero got a hand on that. And Vendola is, has got Andrew Sisko towering over him. And Salzburg helps him to his feet. Fasiero was in the middle of that mix as well. And St. Thomas Aquinas was awarded a 30-second timeout. So Vendola did a stellar job there. And with 59.8 seconds to go, are you surprised at all, Scott, that Damon isn't fouling? Yeah, I am a little bit surprised. I, you know, this game still, you know, you're looking at a minute left to go. Um, you know, this, this St. Thomas Aquinas team has been so talented and hitting so many shots, and they hurt you in so many different ways. And knocking down some big threes today from so many different people, able to get to the basket. Uh, I, I just think Damon right now is, it, they're just tired. They are they are exhausted. Anytime you play a, a St. Thomas Aquinas team that puts up 91 points, you know, a game, you know, you're going to you're gonna get run to the ground. And, you know, they managed to beat them last weekend and then keep it to a three-point game on Sunday. You know, they, you know what? They didn't have their best stuff here today. And uh, great preparation by uh, Tobin Anderson and uh, the Spartans today. Replay down at court level as the officials checking out that last sequence that involved massive humanity rolling around on the floor in search of the elusive loose ball. And we will see what they come up with. St. Thomas Aquinas a minute away. And don't forget, there's there's always a little bit different when you know your ticket is punched for the NCAA the next week. And there's no knock on Mike McDonald. I mean, he has made this Damon program one of the elites in the East Coast Conference. Mentioned just one of three teams to come out of this building with two road wins over the last six years or so. Uh, the other ones were Bloomfield and Bridgeport. But sometimes you live to find another day and... Maybe he just knows his, his Wildcats team five possession game with a minute to go. Uh, it would be the stuff of legend, to say the least. Yeah, without a doubt. We got a couple of Reggie Millers out there. That might work. <clears throat> Roberts holds the ball outside. The shot clock was reset to 20. So, again, Stack can just run some very valuable seconds. And St. Thomas Aquinas is going to win the East Coast Conference Men's Basketball Tournament Championship for the fifth time in six years. Lynch with the bucket fittingly he's had that assignment of wearing cisco all night andrew cisco is on the bench so the white flag essentially being waved stacked by 16. on the blocks here's ziv baston he's short the shot clock will be turned off and saint thomas aquinas can hold Timeline crossed, shot clock off, 15 seconds to go, and it's all over but the counting. St. Thomas Aquinas College. Holding serve on home floor. Back where they're used to being for the fifth time in six seasons. The St. Thomas Aquinas College Spartans are the East Coast Conference men's basketball tournament champions. Congratulations yet again to Tobin Anderson and the Spartans. What a miraculous run this team has been on. We're going to have post-game interviews coming up for you in just a few moments as my partner is going to start making his way down to courtside. But, Scott, what can you say about this stack team? Well, we knew coming in that this team wears you down. And, you know, you look at seven players last game in double figures, you know, then a couple terrific games today. I mean, Grant Singleton with 20 points. And, you know, Dimitri Roberts, what a game he had with 23 points. And then everybody else chipped in. A lot of preparation. And so excited for St. Thomas Aquinas. The ladder is coming out, ready to cut down a championship net. And they are so used to this. Congratulations to Coach Tobin Anderson and the Spartans. And once again, a terrific season for Damon and a great career for Cisco. The Spartans have won two championships. 
in Bridgeport, Connecticut at Hubble Gymnasium as the University of Bridgeport hosting. Both of those wins were against Malloy College. They won up at Roberts Wesleyan a couple of years ago against the University of Bridgeport. And last year, they beat Bridgeport in the finals. The first time they're going to get to cut nets on home hardwood. Possibly the last. Again, this is a facility that's just too small. Uh, it doesn't have the locker room and, and court resources to host a full championship event. And because of the nature of the COVID year of basketball, St. Thomas Aquinas as the high seed getting to host today. They want to talk about a little motivation, and I don't think you need enough playing against Damon. Uh, Tobin Anderson and company have the fullest of respect for Mike McDonald and the Damon Wildcats, and they deserve a big hand for their effort throughout this season. Again, they're going to the NCAAs, and they're a team that could just as easily win that region. We'll see where they're paired when uh, the seedings are announced later on tonight on NCAA.com. But if you talk about the motivation of wanting to cut net on your own floor, that's a unique experience for Stack. Also think about the incentive of keeping your opponents from cutting down nets on your floor. We'll take a look as we wait for Scott Green to get in position. Take a look at tonight's final stats for the Damon Wildcats. Andrew Sisko led all scorers with 27 points, 9 rebounds. Only the second time this year that he was held under double figures in rebounds. And that's what Andrew Sisko does. He'll give you that 27-10 just about every game. Wasn't enough today. Andrew Mason added 19 points. Got in a little foul trouble in the first half. Kyle Harris with seven. Sean Fasiero with five. Justin Johnson with five. And Ryan Salzburg with four. For St. Thomas Aquinas, only three scorers in double figures. They had seven on Friday night. Uh, but they did it in fine fashion. Dimitri Roberts had 23 points and six assists to go with that. Grant Singleton had 20 points and seven rebounds. Osborne Cannabio, 13 points, eight rebounds. Luke Griffith and Kevin Lynch had eight points apiece. Jamal Barnes with six. Antonio Vendola with three. And Elijah Bavell with two. See St. Thomas Aquinas. A familiar sight donning the commemorative ECC Champs t-shirts. The Anderson family has a wardrobe, I think, by now. And folks, we're going to tell you, it's something you never get tired of. See Dr. Robert Dranoff at midcourt, longtime commissioner of the East Coast Conference. Usually get to interview him on these broadcasts at tournament time. Missed that opportunity, obviously, trying to stay social distant, but... Right man, right job, and Dr. Robert Tranoff has done an exemplary job, as have the staff at the ECC office. Our producer today, Casey Rafferty, lead publicist. Nicole Ryan, the athletic director at St. Thomas Aquinas and the host of today's game, also presenting the trophy. Lou Griffith plants a kiss on it. That might not be COVID safe. And the players may not care very much right now as we see masks out on the floor for the team picture. They need to care because they got a game next week. And St. Thomas Aquinas will hold the number one seed in the region. They were number one seeded by the NCAA coming into this weekend's action. And nothing to change that with the CACC not playing and Stack winning the title. So they'll be the number one seed. And what that does is that gives them a bye to next Sunday's regional semifinal. That'll be held in Albany, New York at the Albany Capital Center. Pardon me. Spartans with some smiles. You see one single finger in the back. I think that was Elijah Bavell. And again, Bavell transferred from Queens. Now Kevin Lynch sticking one up. But when you start to, to move into those upper echelons and you get there, the adage is act like you've been there before. And this stack team has and is. They've won one regional championship. They were the number two seed a year ago. They made it to the regional final at St. Anselm the year before last. Won a stellar opening round game against Dominican College. Those teams were set to rematch. Lou Griffith hit a big three-pointer at the end of regulation to send that game to overtime, and Stack came out with a victory. They were set for a rematch last year as the 2-7 game. Stack was two, Dominican was seven. So it was a good chance with Dominican being in the mix as Bluefield College is. A 
the tournament team being announced. Dimitri Roberts getting kudos. So Stack could end up playing Dominican again. It'll be interesting to see who gets that number two seed. I think they're going to give it to Bloomfield as they were declared the CACC champions without the tournament based on their 6-3 and three regular season record. Gerald Holmes and the Bears have been there before. They have played some amazing games against St. Thomas Aquinas. Oddly, we mentioned they've won two games here. Well, Stack has won two games there. So home court has been kryptonite for those two teams, but they are fun to watch. We'll see who gets that by the next Sunday's regional semifinal. Grant Singleton, the tournament most valuable player in the Spartans. Again, they could fill a corridor now with these pictures, posing with the championship banner five times in six seasons. In case you're wondering, the only loss was two years ago in the semifinals against Malloy. Stack led that game by 12 midway through the second half. And Charles Marquardt and the Lions battled back, won that game, and the next day they beat Bridgeport in overtime on their home floor to get Coach Marquardt his first championship. That is the only break in Stack's string. Seven times in eight seasons they've been to the finals. The they've won it five times. Down. Lost those first two. There was some work to do to get used to it. And now, the ladder is set. Let the clipping begin as Scott Green gets into position. He's going to be joined momentarily by St. Thomas Aquinas coach and ECC coach of the year for the third time, Tobin Anderson. And he gives an embrace to the tournament MVP, Grant Singleton. See Scott Green there, my partner, well dressed, setting the sartorial standard for the broadcast crew today. And the socially distant post game is about to begin, and we will send it down to Scott Green for tonight's post game interview. And we're joining post game with Grant Singleton, our player of the game and conference tournament MVP, along with Coach Tobin Anderson and his fifth in six years. And we're going to start with Grant. And Grant, what a game for you guys today. Uh, you've had a tremendous amount of success all season long. Last Saturday, you weren't successful here. You lost by three in overtime to Damon. Then Sunday, you were able to come back and do it again. What was your feeling, in, especially in this unprecedented year, when that buzzer sounded to end this game? We're experiencing, we're experiencing some technical difficulties with Grant Singleton's microphone, and unfortunately we don't have direct and communication. And talk a little bit about down the court you know, this, your tournament. You have 17 points coming into this. Yeah, we're, we've gotten Scott's attention. Now we're having some technical difficulties with Grant Singleton's microphone. 17 points coming into this game today and, uh, against Malloy in a very tough game. And then today you come out 20 points. What was the difference in this one? Again, Grant Singleton's mic is not working, so we're asking Scott Green to hold the microphone out for Grant. Nope, Grant is not working. Well, meanwhile, Casey, uh, Casey Rafferty is going to direct some traffic here. We'll turn our attention to St. Thomas Aquinas. And we'll reboot this interview in just a moment because Grant Singleton certainly deserves his due. St. Thomas Aquinas, again, different players step up in different games. It was Singleton who stepped up big. Mentioned those two games last weekend. St. Thomas Aquinas was leading by eight with four minutes to go in the first game and lost. The second game, Damon was leading by eight with six minutes to go and lost, and Singleton was the one who spurred that comeback. Let's try it again and send it back down to Scott Green with Grant Singleton. And it's post game here at St. Thomas Aquinas College, and congratulations to the St. Thomas Aquinas for winning their fifth championship in six years. I'm joined by Grant Singleton from St. Thomas Aquinas along with head coach Tobin Anderson. And we're going to start with uh, Grant. And Grant, wow, what, what a year it's been. You know, we had you last year in uh, Washington, D.C. You come here on your home floor. Last weekend, you got split with Damon. Today was the rubber match. You got it for everything. What was your feeling at the buzzer today? Uh, it was a very crazy feeling knowing what the whole team has been through. 
Um, we've put, put in a lot of work and practice just for this moment right here. So it's a, it's a crazy moment for us, crazy moment for me, crazy moment for the coaches. And we're glad, just glad that we could do it. And what a tournament for you. 17 against Malloy a few days ago in that big win. Come out today, you dropped 27 boards. What do you attribute to the success in the last week? Um, just playing with a chip on my shoulder. Uh, I know the guys trust me, and they let, they let me just do what I do. And so that's what I did. So now you're getting ready to go to the NCAA tournament. How does this team prepare, and how far can this team go? Um, this, team, this team is a, is a, is a very great team. Um, it's nothing, nothing that we can't accomplish. So the sky's the limit for us, and I hope we can go real, real far. Congratulations on your win today. Go cut some nets down. And hustling in just like the defense of his team. Coach Anderson, you have to lead by example. And Coach, we got to talk about this season. I mean, you come into this in the beginning of the year, uncertain what's going on. How did you prepare this team in, in these un, un, with these crazy circumstances? Well, first of all, it helps to have a lot of veteran players. We have a lot of experienced guys, and they're a little bit older, so the older guys kind of led the way, and it was all new for all of us. I mean, it was just a, a weird year, and and uh, they hung in there. We, we, you know, we went for a long time. played on February 3rd, so to go all that way and not to play till February, then we had 12 games in 25 days. You know, it was big last week. We had, we had a week off. We had a little bit of rest. That was huge for our guys. So um, all the credit to our guys for, for hanging in there. Um, to, to, to follow the, the rules, the guidelines, and, and, and being together. And I think it's just they're, they're, they're great kids who, who are really together. You know, Coach, this is your fifth uh, ECC championship in six years. You've really dominated this league uh, over the last six years. Where does this one rank among all of them? I mean, they're all, they're all awesome because, I mean, even today, I mean, I'm nervous as heck. I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to be – we're, we're going to get beat. We're, we're not ready to play, the whole thing. So it's like they're all, they're all big and, and – um, they're all they're all great for the guys, and it's a whole new, every year is a whole new team. So no, we we take this tournament very seriously. We want we want to win the tournament, obviously. Now now, once you win this, you want to win the next one. But it's it's great for us to uh, to win this and to play well. I thought more importantly, we played really well. Like we're starting to peak at the right time. I think. How do you get this team prepared now for the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I mean, I think now we take a couple of days off here. We get a little bit of rest, mentally and physically. We don't play till next Sunday now, so we get a, a week off. So that, that's important. And um, I, mean, I think our guys honestly have had their eyes on this for a while. I mean, it just that's realistically, we knew we were pretty good coming into the season. So now um, we'll crank it up, you know, this week and get, get a little bit better as a team. And one day at a time, man. It's 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 all it's all it's been all year long is one day at a time, trying to get a little bit better. And and uh, I trust our guys. We have really good players who are also great kids that are together. And I think we uh, there's good things ahead of us. Well, best of luck in the NCAA tournament. Congratulations, coach. Thanks a lot. Coach. You got it. Back up to you. And thank you very much, Scott Green, with the East Coast Conference Coach of the Year and certain number one seed for the upcoming NCAA East Regional. Again, those will be in Albany, New York next weekend. It will be a fan-free environment, uh, but you can catch all the action. As St. Thomas Aquinas College going back to the NCAA tournament to coin a phrase and paraphrase slightly, my teammates let me do what I do, and I did it. Grant Singleton, that needs to be on a plaque somewhere because his teammates did it. St. Thomas Aquinas, 83, Damon, 67. It has been a tremendous weekend. Again, NCAA Selection Sunday will happen later on tonight, so we'll understand what the pairings are, the matchups, et cetera. And it has been an absolute pleasure yet again uh, in a very unusual year. Technical difficulties and all. Hey, it's COVID year. We wouldn't have it any other way. We thank you so much for watching wherever you might be, and we hope you'll follow the ECC teams as they head to the postseason. Tobin Anderson with the final cut. His office is not a huge one, but there's ample netting there. So if they ever run out in the gym, Tobin Anderson has several to give, not only from the ECC tournament, but from the region as well, as Stack did win one regional championship, looking for number two this year. Want to thank everyone at the ECC office for their help and support, as always, and of course, their tremendous flexibility and just the drive to get a, a season underway this year. Credit goes to the ADs, the athletes we've spoken about throughout the day, Commissioner Robert Dranoff and his crew. Uh, it has been an all-around group effort to give these young men and women a chance to perform as they do so well. Once again, congratulate the Roberts, Wesley, and Red Hawks on the women's side. And on the men's side, St. Thomas Aquinas bringing home the hardwood yet again. It doesn't have far to go. They'll be facing the NCAA tournament next weekend. We thank you all for joining us yet again. The final score, St. Thomas Aquinas, 83. Damon, 67. 
for all of us here at Aquinas Hall and for my partner, Scott Green. This is Steve Balson. Thank you again for joining us and saying until next time, so long from Spartan.